So what is going on guys, this is Ryan here and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We are back now guys for part two and honestly I enjoyed part one so much that I'm already recording part two before part one's even gone live yeah. right now. Last episode we got introduced to all of the characters I guess of the Literature Club and I didn't think I'd get this much into this game but I kind of have by this point. It's too late to turn back guys, there's a lot going on with this game so usual disclaimers, there may be something in this episode that some could consider disturbing, at least it gives that as like a synopsis so I'm going to say at the start. Secondly, for this game, all these choices are going to be my own, guys. I'm not following any walkthrough because I don't see the point in spoiling the game if I'm to experience it for you guys. And actually, thirdly, I have the game files open. It's the one thing that people told me to do without spoiling anything, so it's always there on the side, guys, on my second screen just here. We're going to be keeping a watchful eye on that one. By the way, guys, that wasn't editing. I do actually have something wrong with my eye. I mean, it's done it again. We ended last time and we were just about to fill out, I guess, our next day's poems. So let me just flick through these and let's say, I mean, nature, that's a good way to start a poem. I mean, we made someone happy at least. Walking through a bliss forest and then all of a sudden a thunderstorm strikes. Let's go, I guess, fantasy for that one again. Vibrant seems pretty cool. All right, let's keep this moving. Hair, fireworks, destiny, uh, play. I mean, that seems pretty damn dope. Holiday, excitement. That's another good one. I'm pleasing the girl to the far left. I think that's Sayori. Then we can go for heart again. Playground sounds cool to me. Let's then go for... I mean, massacre. Let's not cross playground and that word together. Question. Extraordinary. Vivid. Hope. Passion. Peace. Pure. Yeah. Dazzle. Eternity. And then last but not least, let's go for daydream. I mean, daydreaming is the perfect thing. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. And I mean, this dude's probably so happy by this point. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Sayori is right there. Hi, Ryan. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Mm, I think so. I'm just still not used to you being in a club, that's all. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, but I guess at least it worked, man. And I, I mean, I literally just said that in a different way. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No. Are you kidding me? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse site? Huh? Why that all of a sudden? Wait, hold up. What's going on? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the content spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah, uh, I knew it. You knew what? I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the room. Oh. Either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Sarah is kind of smart, right? I see that. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that only leaves the one option. Whoa, whoa, I give up! Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to- <gasps> Why am I screwing this person down right now? Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in her book as always. Aha! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Ryan to let me borrow some money. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Did I just... I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, I like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. There, there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution? Oh, did she say retribution? Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? <laughs> I see that foreshadowing. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes, so I had to trick Natsumi into making... I mean, she's she's right. Like, oh, what the, what? I don't know why something smacks sorry in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was? Huh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it was a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry glances around. Is it a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> So it was this girl. I was just going to give it to you. Instead, you throw it in her face. Natsuki, that's so nice of you. Even though I got a huge black eye coming down right now. Sorry, hoax the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. <laughs> Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So she's now getting kind of hungry fairly often. Sorry, suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Oh, well, that's not funny. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Oh, I see. I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. I mean, it was a nice gesture. Sayori gets out of the seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Oh, that's kind of nice. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki. There was planning, monotonous plan behind this. Did you seriously just do that? Mm-hmm. Mouthful. Sayori trots away to safety. Yori and I laugh. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monika, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. 
Monica, where the freak are you? That's a bit unusual. You don't think she, she has a, uh, I wouldn't be too surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. I see. Okay. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. <laughs> we didn't start nothing. Well, maybe it's a different kind of glance. <laughs> what held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time, so still studying, I'm guessing. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it uh, since I was practicing piano. She looks kind of like she's lying with that expression right there. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I, I don't really. Why? Okay, I just said recently, why is she telling a lot of porkies right now? I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. So the subject, nah, everyone's just dusting this off. Maybe once I get a little better, I'll play something for you all. That sounds pretty cool. I'd also look forward to that. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ryan. Okay, Monica smiles sweetly. <laughs> Sleeping those girls away, like you already know. I've been practicing a whole lot recently and I'd really love the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thank you. We didn't tell Monika anything about Sari's mischievous stuff that was going on. We wanted to keep that down. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sari somehow already finished her entire cookie. She's eaten a lot. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? So we're not very good at this on our own. We ended up not reading, guys, because we're pretty tired. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm, well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual, but it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone, something that speaks to their creative minds. Even if we come up with the most fun thing, no one will come in the first place because it's a literature event, so it's important to figure out how we get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do something to speak their creative minds. What's this? Sarah is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Ah, well, I guess we could- Cupcakes! Okay. We're sold, we're sold. It's like Natsuki's got the cupcakes under control. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Barry's hungry again. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. Hmm. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. That's the main thing, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I like Sayori, man. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, I mean, we're pretty damn close right now. I open my own to find Sayori's face filling my vision. Sorry, wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. I mean, we have came to the club. It's not the napping. All right, I get it, I get it. You're staying up late, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You still need to get used to it. Uh, don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself? You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh... Yeah, I think so. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... it's a secret. Come on, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sari, it's written all over you. Sari glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? Don't take that literally. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around him. Whoa, I mean, bro. I run my fingertips down the side of Sari's hair trying to straighten it out. I guess that's kind of a nice thing to do. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger, but, but no one would even notice that. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. I start to button her blazer from the bottom, so it looks like we're doing her a favor. Once you see how better it looks, you'll change your mind. Okay, oh. <coughs> Harry's laughing. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it would be to have a friend who does these kind of things. Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Ah. I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. What are you smiling about? Okay. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you'll look much better now. So, why does it feel strange to see Sari's blazer buttoned up like that? Maybe it's never been done before? I don't even know. And after all that, she just freaking unbuttons it. Savage. That's so much better. Sari puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? 
What kind of logic is that? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. I mean, sorry. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, sorry. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Okay, so it's poem time again. Sorry, I said Ryan, I can't wait to read yours. I just hope we did a good job. I can already tell right off the bat. I'm gonna struggle to edit this episode down. There's so much cool information for this one. I'm gonna pick Sari first for this one, you know? So she's written it. Oh my goodness, this is so good, Ryan. Huh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. I wanna put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Ryan poem, and that makes it feel extra special. <laughs> Sari hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sari, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of sweet, really, isn't it? Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Same with music, I guess. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try and keep that in mind. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? Bitter sweet. I guess that is a pretty good definition. That's the one. I like happy poems, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. I'd say so. All right, now we're going to go and read Sari's poem. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Nice. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a little bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of French. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my ball caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, pulling them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. Friends, my friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside, inside my, my head. head. This could kind of express how she acts so positively towards everyone else. You know, she's taking the happy thoughts from herself, storing them away to give to someone else. I mean, come on, Sayori, you gotta save some of those happy thoughts for your own. Holy crap, Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been recently in touch with my feelings. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times? Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Hmm. I mean, that was a pretty good story. All right, Yuri, let's see what you got. Or rather, she's gonna see what I've written first. This is pretty good, Ryan. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes, so I respect you for trying new things. Thank you, thank you. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain it's like tuning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm being so creepy all the time. Like, I'm, I'm seriously being weird. I have an example of that if you'd like to read. Of course. Uh, is this the poem you wrote for today? Yorinards and Timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. 
It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my storage tendencies as an, uh, what, uh, strange tendencies as an, or an ordinary human, does I say? I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry cur- the raccoon was- oh no, where's this going? The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in my eyes if my ra- I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic, Prevalent conditioning, I slice the bread and I feed myself again. I was a little more daring with this one yesterday. Uh, I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take that face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Ryan? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Couldn't have said it better myself. Next up, let's go Natsuki, all right? You already know I'm saving Monica for last. Because I think she's written the best poem. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what? Wait a minute, maybe that was a compliment. Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayari's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength, but you never really struck me as her type. Sayari has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. Think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Well, you don't need to. All right, here's the poem. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I've heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she rang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That, that's why I'm not- It doesn't matter if she likes her other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she likes it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Cool. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do for yesterday's poem. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler energies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? It's about how everyone thinks my- that, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it so it's easily relatable. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Yeah, I mean, you should accept anything. People are their individual people, so why try and limit your vision so that they should only do the same thing, otherwise they're considered not normal? Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy, I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. It's so true. Yuri wrote something similar. Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to- I can't help but think, like, there was something to do with her, like, at the end with the knife, did she like kill the raccoon, but like eat the bread? So it was like the knife thing was linking to eating the bread, never feeding the raccoon. I mean, yours pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, we've just said that. It's not like I would just- <gasps> Natsuki. Natsuki has trouble finding words. Did she write a poem about being the bad person, yet she is kind of- you know, that person? In my writing, I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. All right, will do. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. I mean, I guess I'm going to. Who should we pick next, huh? I mean, that's so many ch- uh. Hi again, Ryan. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. Want to share your poem that you wrote for today? I mean, let's go for it. I like this one. It makes me think of something sorry we would like. I mean, loads of people have said that. Is that so? You and sorry are really good friends, right? 
right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Well, we may be good friends, but Sarah and I are actually really different. Maybe there are also similarities, however. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. I mean, we've already discussed about me caring more for her, she cares more about me. That's the kind of vibe I get from your poem. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound so much like Yuri. But in any case, Sari's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. I mean, we've already mentioned, like, we've got to... I don't know how to say this. So I feel like I may be assuming stuff. But I I'm still keeping a close watch on Sayori just because there's some things I need to keep a close eye. You guys may be on the same wavelength. If it's your first playthrough, please don't spoil it though, regardless in the comments if I'm right or not, because I want to figure this out myself. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cack of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveform. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign, cosine and tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Uh, uh let me, hold on, let me check my files. Nothing yet, I'm watching. I'm super watching, guys. Like, my eyes, you see them glancing over there? That's because it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Aha, uh -huh, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you didn't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood. Fair point, fair point. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it is about, though. She mentioned the epiphany sometimes. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with a reader. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Uh, in reality, like, what's she talking about in this universe? You never know when something might happen. Wait, is this tip of... That's the first big... Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Now we see. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Maybe a very well-timed hint. All right. I just saved my game. I'm gonna save it one more time. All right, you know what? No, 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 no. New slot. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come to the front room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? Both Yuri and Nasuki are concerned that they're not going to have enough time to put stuff together. I don't really do well with last-minute prep. Don't worry so much, we're going to keep it simple, okay? Sorry has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. That's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard all about it already. We're going to be performing. Uh, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event, but the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare any ahead of time. Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monika? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask from them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. Nasuki and Yuri remain silent. Sari looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sari and Monica have been trying to really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but now she's silent. It looks like Nasuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. What about you, Yuri? She's the nervous one. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I, I guess I don't really have much of a choice. Ah, that's everyone. It looks like we're all in. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way. If you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. C can I go next? Of course. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. 
<laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I I I'll go next. Huh? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of Crimson Eye. Yuri gets past the first couple of lines and her voice changes from stammering. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident person. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and she enunciates with perfect timing. <laughs> that word, but Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. It it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you so much for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm the next then. Sorry, hops out of a chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Sorry, I giggled. She keeps giggling. Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori's is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think too much of it. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I, I did it. Good job, Sayori. Even Ryan liked it. It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely, but it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite well with the kind of delivery. I, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poem of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. We're up next thing, guys. Natsuki didn't want to go. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has that. Uh, <coughs> Where was I? I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That just leaves you, Nasuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. The poem is called Jump. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Nasuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Nasuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival. I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. We announced that we was going to write another poem, and instantly she takes this kind of pose. And I've noticed this seems to be like almost like a seductive pose. I'm going to say that. It changes whenever she speaks to us. She does this pose. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. So everyone's more into this whole idea now of getting this event on the go. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? It must be a little nice though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ryan. You don't have to say anything. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of the things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori? S sorry, I was just spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um... I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I, I mean, Sari fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. Well, this is where our decision comes in. I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sari. I don't know, man. This kind of walking thing that I've got with Sari. She's a long-term friend. Uh, we're writing these poems. I'm actually picking these and a lot of it's relating. I think I'm going to have to, man. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? B but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Ryan. You think about me too much sometimes. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm? 
the conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird saying for Sayo to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? And it's the end of the day and time to write our next poem. All right, we're gonna write this poem so Smile will be the first one. Then we're gonna say, hmm, I mean, we could probably decide in our head as we go. We could then say love. We're gonna write a nice poem today. We're going for cute right there. Then we're gonna go for, I mean, bubbles. They're kind of cool, right? I, I freaking like bubbles. Let's go for laugh on this one. Rainbow. Pure? War. Happiness sounds good to me as well. Heartbeat. Oh, yes. Feather as well. Let's keep this moving. Firefly sounds pretty damn dope. Now we're gonna go, I guess, adventure. Sounds cool. I'm, like, literally, I've done every single one, and I think Sayori is liking this. And we'll finish up, finally, with Dream. So a nice little selection there. We should have something pretty good. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked in. There's something going on, and Monica keeps coming in late every time. You practicing piano again? Yeah. Um, she is not practicing piano at all, guys. I guess I have passion for doing both, the club and also the piano. Remember that the club but wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help me out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be great. Well, that's a change. Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Let's just focus on our event for now, okay? Where is Sayori? Oh, there you are. So wait, Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of a room looking down on nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. I don't, don't mind me. You can go and talk to everyone else. Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It, it just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. You worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sorry shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Um, okay, man, this, uh... This is, this is an interesting day already. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else, but the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori. Since they've been prepping the festival, they must be spending a lot of time. Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything worse with Sayori? Is anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little bit downcast today. Oh, you, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up. Oh man, maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Ryan. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about her well-being of the club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of, uh, oh, uh, I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Ryan. Me? How on earth would you come up with that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sari talks about you more than anything else, you know. She's been so much happier ever since you joined, but she seems a little bit down, though. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. Sari is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has been. She's doing that pose again. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, well, okay, um... Hmm. I didn't mean to jump to conclusion, so you should just forget what I said. I'll try to talk to her. Try not to think about it for now. I know she said forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh, sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving just like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room and suddenly Yuri peering at me from over the desk appears. I've realized that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? It's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. So she's like an analyst as well. Although I was staring or anything, I, I didn't mean to do anything creepy like that. In any case, I, I guess you were right. I respect that you want to keep stuff to yourself, but if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. She seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened. That's quite romantic. Wait, wait, what? Sayori and I have been friends for a long time, and that's all. I see. 
then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Sari is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what she may be going through inside of her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too, and I also feel some concern for her. Sari really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I, I guess, but you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends and that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't always aware were in you. Th that is, I, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading. We're about to do some re- uh oh. About to? Okay, everyone- oh. I mean, come on right now, Monica. Like, you have to slide in right now when I was just about to- start. Why don't we share our poems now? Ah, oh, Monica. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to receive their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. As I, as I, you know, looked at me. Smile back. Okay then guys, now feels a good spot to end this episode. We got some poems to read for the next one, and the thing about these, I'm finding the poems to be the most crucial part, because they're actually revealing more about these characters and how they actually are. I think it'll be a nice spot to pick part three up as well from there on. We can kind of see some things now, very small things starting to amass. As I say guys, looking over at the game files, nothing has changed yet. Maybe Sayori's wrote about how she's feeling in her poem, maybe we can learn a thing or two about it, so I'm hoping so. Either way though, we're gonna have to wait until the next episode to see what happens. A very exciting experience and I am interested to see what each of these characters are feeling and what they've maybe written down in terms of their personalities in their poems. If you guys did enjoy this video though, why not drop me that like crane and hey, if you're new around here, why not subscribe for more videos just like this one right here. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. I of course hope you did enjoy and I will of course see you on the next one.